Hi guys and welcome to Barry Supercars and welcome today to Jaguar Land Rover Peter Maritzburg. Uh, excuse the noise, we are literally right next to a highway. Um, but today we are going to be looking at the Range Rover Velar. Now this is not usually something I'd put on my channel, but I've had a massive soft spot for the Range Rover for, well since it's been launched really. Um, I just think it's a fantastic car. And yeah, when the Range Rover Velar came out, yeah, I think I still prefer the proper Range Rover, the Range Rover Vogue, uh, but the Velar is pretty nice. So what I think we need to do now is have a look at the car and have a little walk through all the details. Rightio, so what do we have here? Well, this is the Range Rover Velar D240 HSC. This is the R Dynamic package. And well, where the Range Rover Velar sits in the range, within the Range Rover, because we've got the Range Rover Evoke, we've got the Range Rover Sport, we've got the Range Rover Velar, and we've got the proper Range Rover, the Vogue. And I'm actually going to sit inside because it is boiling, so we shall just open up here into the lovely interior, guys. This, what Range Rover do really well are interiors. I mean, all this perforated leather, this lovely, and nothing, nothing feels plasticky. Obviously, here you've got a little plasticky bit but I mean around here you've got your polished metal you've got all your touch screen infotainment stuff your steering wheel um, yeah but it's it's a really proper quality finish um, and of course you've got your infotainment system here but uh, back to what I was saying uh, the Range Rover Velar sits between the Range Rover Evoque and between the Range Rover Sport if I'm not mistaken it's sort of a in between in my opinion I think there might be too many Velar or like too many um, variants of the Range Rover because yeah I just think if you want a Range Rover want to get the proper one like we've got a Range Rover Sport over there that's like proper beast but um yeah this is sort of to be honest when it came out when I saw the first pictures of it I really thought this was like some very expensive version of the proper Range Rover but um as far as I can tell, <laughs> it's not that special, but um, yeah. Right, so what I thought I'd do is show you guys through the little infotainment system. And I'm learning as you guys learn because I haven't really, <laughs> haven't um, played with this that much. But over here, you've got your climate control, so can you set your, the, you know, the fan speed. It's a bit too much. Put it down to one got that in here once you've done they can set your temperature but we'll have that on very low because it is hot today and here you've got all your driving characteristics of the car so here we've got you can either use your touch screen eco mode comfort or you can just use this toggle here um, grass gravel won't be needing that today um, mud and ruts sand yeah so really this what we need to remember is this is essentially still a Range Rover. You'll be able to take this thing off-road, no problem whatsoever. And somebody actually mentioned, or brought up a good point, I can't remember who it was, but um, they mentioned that you could get a sec or a used Rolls-Royce for less than you can get a new Range Rover. Now I know this is not like the proper Range Rover, but if you take into consideration the Range Rover, the Vogue, I played around with the configurator, I have to admit, and um, I, I managed to get four and a half million rands worth of Range Rover. I mean, you, if you look properly, you could get a used uh, Rolls Royce, and I know they're not really the same car, but Range Rover is all about luxury. But I think the reason you would take a Range Rover over a Rolls Royce is basically because you can go off road in it. Obviously, you've got the color in now, but no, that's I'm pretty sure you won't get under. 10 million rand for any one of those um, so the Range Rover does sort of have the market kind of to its own I know you get your you've got the new BMW X7 and you've got your Mercedes GLS um, but to me the Range Rover you know has a special place in my heart uh, but carrying on here here you've got your climate you can obviously set to where you want the air to blow your vehicle settings where we just played you've got your Heel descent control, uh, auto start stop. Um, yeah, everything you expect. To be perfectly honest, um, 
yeah. And see what else do we have here. You've got your media. Then over here you've got your parking sensors. I love this. It's a nice clean layout. Um, a very nice clean layout indeed. Uh, so here you've got your navigation. See how in Peter Maritzburg. Your telephone, your Bluetooth, parking sensors, cameras. I really like. I, I, I <laughs> admit I haven't played with these. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you can see that there. It's actually really good high resolution. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. And another really cool thing is, is when you turn the steering wheel, I've always liked this, those wheels in the front there turn with it. And this is really, really entertaining. <laughs> but yeah, I really like it. Your hill descent controls over there, as I already said. Uh, this is the R Dynamic version. And yeah. Right, now we're going to have a look about the practicality version. So actually, before we do that, so I just move this forward into my position. Very slowly. Okay, so this is now in my driving position. So now I'm going to have a little test to see if we can get four of me's in the back. Um, I like these door handles also. Sort of like pop in and pop out. And like so, when you lock the car, they hide away and it makes it's a nice, clean, sleek line. Um, so yeah, here we go. Yep, more than enough room as you would probably expect. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd be more than comfortable here. You've got, obviously, you've got your fan that you could use back here. You've got Isofix if you have mini babies. Um, cup holders here and yeah, we've got the sunroof here, which I think we should also explore, but let's go have a look at the boot. Um, have a look at that size, and then... I love this aluminium finish on the speaker grill. It's fantastic. Have a look at the boot. Obviously, you've got the self-opening boot. Um, and I mean, here you are. Absolutely fantastic. It's actually not that big, it's quite high, I mean you'd be able to get a cooler box but it's quite skinny if you if, uh, if you know what I mean you know, but I'm sure you could get four or five pieces of luggage in there no problem whatsoever and over here you've got your you've got your button there for the tow bar, as you can see now you've got it so far, um, but if you don't want that out there and it doesn't look very pretty, just push this button there and we watch it as it disappears. Very neat, I like that and yeah, so then you just press the button over here, close it. I mean, that's it, the Range Rover Velar. I like these wheels, I really like these wheels. I think they give really clean finish to the car. And these lights, I think this is, my favorite design aspect of the Velar is these lights. I think can make it look very, very sleek indeed. So, let's have a little back in here just purely because it's very hot and of course you've got your you've got your sunroof there panoramic roof and it gives a really nice airy feel to the car which I really like and then of course you can open the sunroof if you are that way inclined yeah I mean that's that's more or less it guys, uh, fortunately I won't be able to drive this because uh, um, they have to take it to the airports I think they said but yeah a big thank you to the guys here at uh, Jaguar Land Rover in Peter Maritzburg for being awesome, <laughs> for letting me film with this car, um, yeah I really hope I'll be able to actually drive a Range Rover in the not too distant future, uh, give you guys a sort of drive review but for now, um, yeah that's it guys thank you so much for watching uh if you like the video make sure to subscribe and i'll catch you guys soon bye